Hey! Welcome back, everybody, on our new... Full-length podcast. Yeah, we're going to be coming at you for uh, an iTunes now. We'll so be on iTunes. You're going to be find us, finding us way easier. Definitely subscribe over. If you haven't subscribed yet on our Twitter account, feel free to tag us there. And now you can find us on iTunes. Welcome along for the ride. Yay, Lesbo and the Bean on iTunes. Yep, Big so steps. we're just, you can look at all of our archives and catch up. But uh, over the last weekend, real quick, uh, I went 4-0 on my picks. I picked two underdogs that might have turned into favorites at the last second. Jason Knight and Masvidal, I feel I came through. And then Naganu and... Um, who is the main event? It's, it's eluding me. Oh, the Shevchenko. Shevchenko. One with a submission that nobody saw coming. How did you do again? I think you were two and two. Um, I believe so. I, I, believe. I think I changed my tap after we went to... I No, I went. I changed tonight and then I think back to Bruce Leroy. I think my tap might have had night on it. I can't remember, but I know I was Bruce Leroy on air. Oh, yeah, I remember on air. It was Bruce but, Leroy. And I was cowboy all day. Yep, and that was a great fight, and um, hey, it's you, a fight. It's a fight. But I actually, it can happen to anyone. Um, we talked about it a little off air, and Cowboy, that I think that he's never going to be a champion. <coughs> he, it's hard for him. Who does he fight next? <coughs> really, it's Robbie Lawler. <coughs> Sorry, that one got me. Woo. So there's Robbie Lawler, Carlos Condit, Nick or Nate Diaz. Jorge Masvidal just said on MMA Junkie that he will not be fighting uh, Lawler next because they're homeboys, and only if it was for a championship would he fight Robbie Lawler. He's known him too long. That's respectable. That's admirable. But he's Jorge Masvidal's ready to fight right he away. He said he's ready to fight yep. uh, Maya, but Maya turned down the fight. Maya did turn down the fight, and I believe we were talking about this before. I think that Magny's the fight, and he was just saying on MMA Junkie that he doesn't like Magny. Magny's been a shit talker, and he's ready to beat up Magny right now, and I think Magny is a seventh or sixth kind of uh, placeholder right now yeah. in that division. So it would be a fight up for Masvidal, and I think that's a winnable fight for him. Honestly. I think it's a good fight. I and think that's okay. What, what I absolutely loved about it is when he was on MMA Junkie with Gorgeous George and Ghost, he was saying, Hey guys, I'll catch you guys later. I'm about to go into wrestling practice again right now. What have I been saying from the get go? You get your wrestling base up the props, and he's not staying. He's not happy with his wrestling base. He keeps getting better at it, which opens the door for all of these other Russian guys that are coming in with yeah. Ultra Wrestling. All of a sudden, you got someone who can shut well, you down. Well, I've also asked you off air, um, how do you beat a Damian Maya? And your answer to me was wrestling, so. American style wrestling, wrestling in general. That's how you kill jujitsu. So I think that is definitely interesting. So Moss with all doing this extra wrestling, you always said that was his weakest point. So him doing that now is awesome. And if that's the way you beat, he's playing the long game. Yes, I, I agree. I think Masvidal. He I said like him five though. years. He said he had five more years of fighting left, and this is a guy who's been fighting from fan. street fights. I wasn't a fan of Masvidal. I wasn't a not fan. I didn't dislike him at all. I just right. did. I could care less about him going into the fight, and I think this was the smartest thing of the UFC to put these guys on the same card because it seems like the people that would like. Cowboy might not necessarily like Moss at all because they like different style of fighters or different kinds of fighters. Yeah. And so it seems like both those guys are so hard in the ring and the mat, you know, the fight that fans carried over both ways. So it makes me sad that I don't think Cowboy's ever going to wear a belt. And I said on our last podcast that I predicted that he'd wear the belt in 2017. Uh-oh. And it was a realization that I don't think he will. Yeah. I think that all he has really left is super fights. And that doesn't necessarily mean a belt, but it'll be headlining Fox cards and stuff like that because he's a fan favorite. But that run to get to the title might be a little too far out of his grasp now. And he's fought the best of the best. He's had a stellar More career. More fights than anyone in a year. Like, how can you take him that kind Neil of Him and Neil Magny, yeah. Him and Neil Magny are up there for as far as a uh, number of fights in a and year. And Matt Brown, hurt, like you were saying going into it, Cowboy gets hurt every fight. How many times can your body take that into your early 30s, mid 30s? That you can get he that kind that of hurt. 18, 19 years old, he's been doing that. Yeah. And it catches up to you sooner or later. Hopefully, he just has money fights from this on out. And hopefully, it's only a couple more. I've loved Donald Cerrone's career. But um, 
we can see the new breed is I coming love him. in. Yeah, and I don't. I think he the can save happening. himself. He is the caliber of not just fighter but fame that he can save for money fights, save save for card headliners, save his body for a paycheck. He has the BMF Ranch. I think he I gets some great say, fighters going out of it. He can start to either if he doesn't want to be a promoter, he can just be a gym runner and stuff like a, an American Top Team, hold the stable of fighters, be at every camp, get a percentage, and he already has a setup. He's already paid for it. And is still renovating it himself. He still has money. Dive in before you don't have money and you have to keep fighting just to pay the bills. Because then you're done. Then you can't have this option. And right now you can. Yeah. Um, great night. Uh, I thought the the, uh, the main card was fun. We, um, I, I enjoyed the it. The Naganu real fast. We both think anyone he's going to fight. I called that uppercut. Yeah. I called it yeah. uppercut finish, yeah. right? And yeah. that's exactly what happened. And the night... Um, yeah, I think that the four that you picked were definitely not... Everyone didn't have them. Yeah, they were like everyone. Shevchenko was pretty. Yeah, Shevchenko. No, sixty forty was Shevchenko. Naganu was solid. solid. That was yeah, where that most was people the, had Naganu. Um, I think it was a sixty forty wash between Knight and. Uh, um, that's I like the pick that we Leroy, did. Leroy, but I think the Cowboy Mosvidal. I think that's where you picked the underdog. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. where most people did have cowboys. It was a close fight. It was a coin flip. Um, what I do like though, if we do have heavy favorites. That we're picking anyways. I like that maybe we'll get specific and be like, all right, how do we really expect yeah. this to figure it out? And it makes it a little bit more interesting. It makes it more and fun. And the Shevchenko, I, she is my favorite fighter in the UFC. Yeah. I loved that um, I sold her to people before the fight. I was talking to people and a few people that watched the fight um, found her charming. Realized. Well, not just her fight. They were like, oh, maybe she's not as good as Cheney said. But I now with my education, she was so composed. Yeah. She wasn't getting hit with all the knees that she was throwing. And she was she was really she timed was out with yeah. picking her sh- uh, takedowns, um, but Take the dance the afterward, how oh, cute yeah. and charming she was. I really just think that the UFC is underestimating her fan base right now because she isn't outspoken, loud, bitchy. I listened to an interview post um, in Latin America somewhere, um, and I listened to it. And her Spanish is so much better than her English. She can translate over to the Latin fan base and. Her just keep working on her English. She speaks Russian as well and Portuguese on top of Spanish. Like, she's coming at you from all angles. She is a star that's in the rough that's slowly weeding her way out. And I think people are understanding that. But, um, great And dancer. I, I great told dancer. you this is such a girl thing. Like, I told you that Holly Holmes needs to dye her eyebrows a little darker and she'd be so much more attractive. And then we saw her a few times that she must have had a makeup artist put dark stuff in her eyes. And not that you fucking care, but all the girls when we talk about it. She looks so much more attractive. The thing with um, Shevchenko, cute. I think she has a killer body. I think she has a great personality. They Obviously, all the stuff that I ever say about looks on here, because I'm going to say it for guys too sometimes, Mm -hmm. I obviously mean they're a good fighter. I'm saying if they want to take it to the next level of fame to get more sponsors and things like that, Shevchenko needs bangs, and I was looking at her style and the fact that she speaks Spanish. Uh If she went full rockabilly, her style already kind of fits it. So if she went full rockabilly, imagine the Mexican guy fans for her. She speaks Spanish well. That's what I mean. I was Imagine the red lipstick on her, yeah. red heels, blonde bang, hair, bleach. Blonde yes. hair. Yes, she you is. You know, Mexican girls be dying that hair yeah. blonde for a reason. Yeah, so I just feel like she should just go full rockabilly with it. Her look, like cuff the jeans with the red heels, Ooh, um, maybe I a like wife it. beater, you yeah. know, um, the shirt. The she already flannel. has the tattoos. Yes, yeah, she already, she already the has the gun tats. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. just feel like I, if I were her, I would go for the Latin America audience. And you turned me on to her. Her, uh, YouTube page with her sister. Everyone should watch it. It's so cute. It is wonderful. Muay Thai that, sisters. It is on a YouTube. great YouTube page. You're gonna see high level technique. Her sister is also a master, but she's her just sister will be in the UFC. Is she training? Her sister will be MMA at all because she. I know that she's, I'm sure just with Shevchenko, but I know she's what the ten times she just won. Training champ. Yeah, I thought so. that I had heard that she was happy with being a Muay Thai champ and be just that on its own, but I could be wrong. And hey. That caliber of fighter, why not? We need that level of competition. It makes the game way more fun and the weekends way better. And I just, I'll stand by what I said on the last podcast. Shevchenko will be the champion. I think she will. Next fight, we need. She's got Amanda Nunes. That was already called out. I'm not. I'm not worried about her taking the punch that everyone was scared of. We've already seen it happen for three rounds. Not worried about it. Already seen it happen. I feel like Amanda Nunes. Shevchenko's taken the best of Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes hasn't seen the best of Shevchenko, and so that's where I think that. I think just Shevchenko, Shevchenko, Shevchenko. I can't have enough to say. Hashtag Team Bullet. 
We can go on. Yeah, I don't have any Pena's next fight. I don't know where she, what she does next. I don't know what I care. I don't know what she does. Did I call the horrible takedowns? Sloppy. The horrible takedowns that I keep seeing on tape and they're like, oh, she's a wrestler. Well, she has good top control and she's wrestled, but any wrestler will be like, that's a horrible takedown. And um, her ground game was really exposed. I don't think a lot of people saw the ground game of Shevchenko coming out. And I don't think she's... It was 2009 or 2006. That's her last submission. Yeah. In the ring. Years. Almost yeah, seven years. Yeah, so that's years. pretty... People... Like, but you were saying the same thing about Naganu. Once people it, saw him submit, all of a sudden it's a whole different well, monster. With, this is happening with JJ, too. People are forgetting how good JJ really is on the ground. She's been put on the ground a few times and done exactly what she needed to do to get the fight back and standing to win the fights. You don't remember him because it's an insignificant, but even they, people have asked her, like, where are you on your belt system? She's like, hey, I want to keep Who's something secret. Who's the karate secret. hottie fighting next? Who's, Watterson? Yeah. Um, Rose? It might be Rose. That's a good fight. That's, That's a, a good fun fight. fight. I want to see Gaudelia Watterson. That's the most interesting fight to me. Because Gaudelia, to me, has the best ground Mm -hmm. in women's 115, but I think that Watterson Mm -hmm. might have it. So So it's like an interesting... This is actually... It's the wrestler versus what you were just talking about. It's that battle. Totally, totally. And that's actually a perfect transition point to go over into this weekend's um, fight card. It's on an FS1. It's um, starting with the prelims at 6 o'clock. In the 115 division on the main card, we're just going to go over the main card here. We have actually Jessica Andrade, who moved down from 135, with returning Angela Hill, who has had three fights in Invicta since being cut from losing to Rose Nami Yunus. And prior to that, she had lost to, I think, Valerie Letourneau type of a fighter. Um, both of uh, both of Angela Hill's losses have been decision. All the rest of her wins have been knockouts in Invicta and even for the championship. That's why she got picked back up. And Drash, this is her second fight, I believe, at 115. Maybe third fight at 115. I believe her t- her KO over Pene and Calderwood. I think Calderwood moved down. Or is this... Or has Calderwood always been 135? Calderwood I, beat Letourneau as well. I think this is her. will be her second fight at 115. But see, I think Penne... I think Penne might be 135. Yeah, I think it might be her second fight at 115. Yeah, uh, Penne... Penne went down. No, she's at... Penne she's, went down. Penne's out. She fought JJ and got her nose busted up. That was Penne. Yeah. So that's yeah. 115. So this is Andrade's second fight at... Uh, or third fight at 115. Fourth. Uh, third, third. Yeah. God damn. So Angela Hill, <laughs> Angela Hill, um, they're both strikers. I draw, I'd give the ground game to, uh, but Angela Hill is a traditional Muay Thai striker who has supposedly said that she's gotten away from just the striking and become a much more MMA based fighter. She's fighting out of Alliance MMA. She's got a bunch of wonderful training partners and I've watched those Invicta fights and she's moving way better than she ever was, not as stiff, and her takedown to foreign the defense has been on point, and that was her biggest weakness. Once she got to the ground, she couldn't withstand the girls' jiu-jitsu games, and they would submit her, but now that they can't get her to the ground or she's getting up off of the ground, changes the game because she's a dynamic striker. And her UFC fights, her losses, her decision in UFC fights, were they were tough fights, and it was right after the tough house, and so I feel like... Um... It, the the caliber of fighter when they first came out of that tough house everything was Carla Sparza Carla Sparza Carla Sparza Carla Sparza JJ came out of nowhere if you remember that whole transition of the one fifteen to all of a sudden the super dominant female champion um, but Angela Hill I feel like she had weird matches in that house and she's been an Invicta she uh-huh. got the belt in Invicta um, she was the champion there for a bit right. She didn't lose it. She's coming over as the champion of Invicta, right? She's coming over as a champion, but I believe that she might have only defended once if she defended at all. Yeah. I, I, um... Gosh, you know, I really... Andrade, when I first started watching, she disappointed me, but then she has just really... She's just looked like a beast her last two fights. Just really awesome just uh, and standing punching hard and she's TKO and women yes hard and I was about to say Angela Hill is one of the few women that has TKO power so I actually think that this is highly likely it should not be that Angela Hill power. is a plus three moderate underdog it should be a little closer that's what I think I think that this is actually more of a coin flip well I could see it being like 
Minus I think a lot of people are looking Josh. at the record on here. Yeah, I um, agree. Because they're, that, and they're forgetting about the Invicta fights. Andrade is a step up from the competition that Hill's been fighting at Invicta, but still. Andrade is in the best level of her game. She looks leaps and bounds better, and she's so young. Yeah. So young. But uh, Hill. The height difference. There's going to be a discrepancy with Hill being taller for the division. 5'3 to 5'2? Never mind. I thought Angela Hill, she's, she's just skinny. She looks tall. Because she's so skinny. If wow. she can take Andrade's punch, it'll go to decision. You know, I just. I. I Angela Hill is a more of a fan favorite of mine. I follow her on Twitter. She really makes me laugh. Uh, I just think Andrade is in her fucking... In it. She's, she's knocking out women as well. She's in her run. Yeah, There's yeah, something yeah. really special. And she just looked... I she, her, she, Like most improved. She'd be in my top five most improved fighters from one fight to the next. Like she just looked really good. I got to go with Andrade on this. This isn't an easy welcome back for Angela Hill. By I think means. Angela Hill, if she's a significant this big of an underdog yep. for the DK lines, though, she could. I think she's going to throw enough punches to be worth the points. Later on in the evening, I was going to get into my value play, and I was actually going to swing with the decision for Angela Hill. I think that Angela Hill's take down the fence is going to be the key factor, and the movement that I saw her. Uh, fight again l- against lower competition was still very um, positive, and it, it was showing me that she was still learning. And she's at a camp where she can learn a lot. So I'm going decision Angela Hill. We'll see what the weigh-ins brings. Um, but I do like her price. She's I think one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, fighter. And I just don't see that that I, if people see the takedown and a submission and. I don't know. Uh, so No, I think I agree with you. It's going to be a stand in punching. I think Andrade is about... so stoked on her punching right now. Yeah. And why wouldn't she be? She yeah, looks great in there. Yeah. And she has her punches. They're different than um, she sits into it. They're different than JJ's. Yeah. She sits into it more like that boxing heavy style. And so I, just, I don't know. I think she's looking really good. I think it's going to go to decision. And I do think it's going to be we're not going to see takedowns unless somebody gets hurt. Otherwise, they're going to stand and throw, I think. I think it's going to be a striking decision kickboxing match it's going to turn into because so Angela think, Hill chooses yeah, I think it. Angela Hill, if she's cheap, it's she'll a be worth it. It's a good it's value It's going to be play. value play. Value so, play for DK. Yep. Moving Hashtag on. Value, value play, play DK. Moving on to the heavyweight division. Um, this is Anthony Hamilton versus newcomer to the UFC. Well, the, the he's not really um, Marcel Fortuna. Had a fight on the UFC's show tough show and lost via decision to Corey Hendricks um Anthony Hamilton just lost to Naganu off of a uh, Kimura um and he was I mean he wasn't doing bad in the fight he wasn't getting hit horribly bad but that Kimura he shot in on Naganu Naganu jumped on that Kimura and finished the fight Hamilton is win one lose one win one lose one he can beat the bottom of the barrel but he can't do anything good against any good guys. He's where he needs to be. He's at Jan- Jackson Winklejohn. He's a specimen as an athlete, big man, ultra athletic, hard You know what? Punches. He's been disappointing. He goes up and down. I he just don't think. One, I think one. he's disappointing since he, I've been around since his first match in the UFC. I didn't know that mm-hmm. much about him coming in. He's just been a big disappointment since coming in. I would say that I've had more hype on him and lost money on him more than one. Every time I pick against you him. You picked him against Naganu. No, I didn't. I picked Nagano. Hamilton versus Nagano? I thought you picked Hamilton. No, no, no. I picked Nagano. I thought he was your underdog pick on that. Like that. You thought he was going to out wrestle him. Oh, no. I think it was Henrique. His first, Nagano's first fight is the first wrestler that oh, I Oh, I thought it was Nagano. this guy. I thought you were really hot on him. No, I do like, I do like Hamilton because he can, sh- he shows athletic prowess where he can beat guys with just his athleticism, but he will leave his hands down and get head kicked by Nikolov Krylov, who is overrated, always been against him, and I've done really well in that. Um, Anthony betting. Hamilton, this is the problem with him. He's too old to get any better. But it's a heavyweight division. It's a heavyweight. Di- there's If there's a division that you can be old in, it's the heavyweight yeah, division. Yeah, like he can be fighting Bigfoot Silva and like those Roy guys. Nelson. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I had him on my card. I had Anthony um, Hamilton winning, but right yeah. after just... Thinking about it again, I'm gonna go Fortuna knockout round one. I think Ooh. Anthony Hamilton has a weak ass chin. Damn, this that's a, a slight young... underdog. Yeah, this is a slight underdog as of right now. Um, Fortuna, fortune favors the brave. <laughs> Hashtag fortune favors the brave. 
<laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going Hamilton TKO round one. He goes win one, lose one, win one, lose one. He's on a win one. He's at the right camp. His head, once it all clicks and he can keep his hands up. Because if he throws punches, people go down. People always get hurt off his punches. I think Fortuna's gonna oh, learn wait, from this. Oh, they're fighting in heavyweight? Yeah, they're fighting at heavyweight. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, heavyweight I might, I'm going to Hamilton. I'm changing it. Oh. Because Fortuna's a light heavyweight fighter. Yeah, and then Hamilton cuts to make 265. And Fortuna and is, an athlete. is, an is athlete. a light heavyweight fighter. Yeah, he was. Now he's a heavyweight. He's going to weigh in this probably at 240. This is his first fight at but, heavyweight. Uh, yeah, I would say probably... He's just coming yeah, off of the show. I always go with the bigger person when it's the other person's. I believe yeah. Hamilton. So well, Hamilton, going with Hamilton. Maybe he doesn't cut for 265. Uh, maybe he weighs around the 250 something, 240 range. But either way, I've seen him move. For for he's a he's an athlete. He could have potentially. I'm been only going athlete. with Hamilton because he's a significantly larger man. Yeah, That's naturally, it. naturally, naturally. All right, moving on. I'll probably stay away from that fight. I'm gonna play Hamilton heavy. I'm just letting you know that's going to be on my DK. But he's expensive on DK. Moving on to a 205-pound fight between Ovin St. Pru OSP versus Volklan Esdemir. Esmir, I believe he's debuting in the UFC. Um, Ovin St. Pru is coming off a two-loss streak. One to John Jones where he broke his forearm in a five-round fight. And then he just lost to TKO to Jimmy Manoa. Jimmy Manoa looked great. Um, this up-and-comer Vulcan guy, don't know much about him. Haven't really done my research. He's from Switzerland, which doesn't have the biggest scene in the world. Um, they may, it might be a tune-up fight for OSP. I can't really speak on this. I'm going to end up passing. But I would more than likely, what it looks like to me, is they're trying to give OSP uh, a TKO to have him get it back on that winning train. Um... He's not a local. I haven't seen much. This guy's decisioning people. He TKO'd two years, four months ago. He TKO'd Paca Estevan, who was a two and three fighter, and then he just unanimously. Where decisioned. are they fighting? Light heavyweight. So this guy's cutting. He's going down in weight. Oh, uh, they're fighting at two o five. Yeah. So he is. He's a heavyweight that's moving down. OSP is a pure athlete. Lacking in technique. I would like to think they're giving OSP a toss up here as, as well, well, right? Because, it's not, that's what it looks like. You know, maybe fans like him, and he's look. He fought a former champion two fights ago. Yeah, but on short notice, right? Either way, either way, either way, they would never give that option to this Vulcan guy. They wouldn't say, "All right, you're going to get in there." Well, with he's John not Jones. even ranked. Exactly, this is his debut fight. I know he's on a main. So they card. must be throwing him up. I think they're throwing him I a don't, bone. Yeah, um, I think they're throwing him a bone, and I think that it's going to be TK but one thing, round one. I like the gym. One of my favorite gyms. Uh, that's our home state gym, Black Zillions. Um, so what's going on with them though? The doors are literally closed at Black. They have Zillions. a new gym. They everyone has moved they already over have already. A new gym. Yeah, and they, it's just in a smaller. Some went to one gym. Some went to another. Most of them went to one gym. One other gym though, right? Is I thought they I opened doors on just a smaller place. But I believe like people like Robbie Lawler and there was a couple other guys oh. that chose to go other places instead of go to the new yeah, gym. Yeah, but think, most um, of the team did go. Did go. Yeah, I was just looking. At, I know Usman stayed mm-hmm. and Luke stayed. Those are my two favorite guys. Those actually. are the ones that you're watching. Specifically I like Usman editor. and Luke. Do you know the team of that gym? I can't think off the top of my head. Their new one. Yeah, their new one because it is a name of something. But um, either way. Stay with those guys because those are good guys that are practicing with each other and they're not messing up their training sessions. They're they're already working around it. Um, it's a young interesting, guy. Interesting, it's a young guy interesting coming fight. out of that gym. I definitely be cautious with it, but I'm gonna lean more on the OSP TKO round. You're going round with experience. Two. Exactly. All these. It is. It's you, this guy's had nine fights, X amount of fights in Strike Force and UFC, where this other guy's only fought regional pros, which is there. We've all we've always seen a big step up. Yeah, just look at the difference between Bellator and UFC. Angela Hill moving down and being yeah. knocking everyone out to coming back and getting decisions in the yeah. UFC. Yeah, you can see it in Bellator all day. All right, moving on to the next fight. This is a sneaky fight. I feel like this might be the fight of the night. Uh, Abel Trujillo against James Vick at 155 pounds. I feel like James Vick is a really, really tall for the weight class. Abel Trujillo's average and uh, Trujillo's a bit older at 33. James Vick at 29. James Vick being 6'3". 
The reach discrep discrepancy is 76 inch reach for James Vick to a 70 inch reach to Abel Trujillo, six inch reach advantage. That does play a role for this fight because James Vick was a Golden Glo Glo Gloves boxer before he came into um, MMA. He's always been a boxer. He got into su his submissions. He's upset some really good guys. I've liked James Vick um, for a long time. I do think I picked Dariush against him, but I haven't picked many guys against James Vick. Abel Trujillo's on a bit of a run, more of a wrestler with ungodly power. I feel like that's what you know Trujillo for is power. His loss in his last four in his, uh, is against Tony Ferguson. He also lost to Habib Nurmagomedov. And other than that, he's been able to beat every other person he's been in a, up against. I would say that uh, his gas tank is his biggest weakness, always has been. He can throw bombs that will knock your head off in the third round, but he's throwing those bombs from his hips. He's throwing them over the top. If you're a technical guy who can use technique, you'll be able to smother those. James Vick is a grinder, good boxer, underrated wrestling, and submissions because he's so long. He's been able to do submission chokes that a lot of other people haven't been able to, and he just... It happens in wrestling and other sports, that length. John Jones, people are like, God, do you know how long that guy's legs are? He can get me in submissions from a, a foot away. Um, I think James Vick's in that category. Really fun fight. James Vick can be knocked out at any point. Um, but I am going to side James Vick to decision, if not maybe leaning more towards a submission. I think I am going to go with Trujillo on this. I think I'm just going to stay with the Black Zillions. <laughs> and Trujillo is a big knockout favorite. We're on topology here in the and it's a near even. It's a coin flip. Minus 105 to minus 115 for James Vick, 105 for Abel Trujillo. This is as close as it gets. This is going to be a firefight or it's going to be a ground game. I imagine Trujillo to be really expensive on the DK, isn't he? I I think it's like an 8181. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it gets a coin flip. I mean, 105 to 115 both minus that's they both it's minus money on both to 31 people rank. yeah it's a really really fun fight Not that the ranks in the ufc matter at all yeah 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 fun fight yeah. moving on i've been touting this fighter this is your since. favorite girl oh yeah this is your shevchenko in this a way been, yes this yes, is yes 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 how I've much i love your... the bullet you've been talking about grasso yep you hear that, Grasso? You Reach hear out. That? Alexis Reach out. Grasso from Michoacan. Ay! Thank <laughs> ay, you. Ay, ay. <laughs> she has great fundamental wrestling. Boxing is her best striking attribute. Um, doesn't throw too, too many kicks. She's going in against the veteran at 115, Felice Herring. Felice Herring just came off of that flash submission against um, Kaylin Curran. It was like, what, 35 seconds? She, like, got yeah. around the back submission. It was super, super fast. She had previously lost to Paige Van Zandt. One of the most overrated fighters I've ever talked about is Paige Van Zandt. And she got decisioned by But you know what I have fighter. to say, though? Uh -huh. Paige in that fight looked like the best Paige but I've ever was seen. It, was it... Was it herring making her look like the best page ever because then it, you know both of them it takes two yeah. to dance but see then i i feel like um saying it's it's like looking at it in the same way to me i think page isn't the most overrated fighter ever but michelle waterson made her look bad because michelle waterson's so underrated so did rose though and I she think, was a two to one favorite for over Rose Nama Yunus. Remember when we yeah, made that money on that? Happen. Remember when we made money on Rose, that? Rose to me That's hype trained specifically. Like if I were gonna rank the UFC just by what I'm looking at, yeah, Rose yeah. is like four. Behind Claudia, Michelle, and JJ. I like that. That would be my ish. I feel like to me, uh Felice Herring has more skill set actually than uh this is where I think, this is where okay, I totally agree. I, I like this, I like this. Felice Herring has more skill set than Paige. Paige has a harder punch. I, I think Felice can't take a punch. So if you already take that off, we know Grasso can throw a punch. So right there, I think Felice Herring uh, gets rinsed. I think she buckles. I think it's one of those. I think she goes down Matt Brown style. I <laughs> Not to a body shot, to a face shot. Misha Tate style in the Noons fight. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. She that, quits. She yeah. takes a punch yes. and says, no, and thank you like, anymore. Dunzo. I like that because we know Grasso throws heavy punches. Um, and they're not heavy because she's big and throws with wicked 
uh, intent. It's that they're so accurate and precise that she hurts women with shots that don't look too powerful, but they're ultra accurate, and it's a testament to her boxing and her boxing coaches. She also has another fighter at 135 who just lost recently, Aldana, um, who's out of the same gym. But she has good training partners. I feel like they train She's at so altitude. Young. They're both, anybody coming out of that gym, I would say pay attention to because their fundamentals, you can see their fundamentals are solid. You know what we saw with the, very, the very Cruz solid. Garbrandt? We talk about it all the time on this show, that new breed of fighter, that new breed of fighter. When yes. you look at this fight, yep. this is, you're about to see somebody who is the old yep. MMA that's right. about to get washed away by that new breed right. of fighter. And Felice and, Herring, she's 32 years old. Yeah. You don't want to go in and there against a, a 20, hungry 23-year-old or hungry 25-year-old. Who's been putting women away. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a rough fight for her. I almost go round one finish. I think I was thinking round Grasso one. round one. I think she's the pick two. of the night. Yeah. I think I'm going to put Grasso heavy on my DK um, if I can. I think she's a little bit expensive, though. Um, I really like Grasso a lot. I pretty much explained why Felice doesn't have good takedowns. What's and Grasso's the good nickname? I don't think she has one. Um, if I were making her nickname, her nickname would be Smokin', and her name would be Alexa Smokin' Grasso. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hashtag Alexis Grasso. Listen to that. Alexa Smokin' Grasso. If you don't uh-huh. have a nickname, Smokin'. She's working on, Alexis Grasso's working on her English as well. I think that whole camp is, and I'm just like, she's going to be a future star. She may not be a champ, but she will be. A contender by the end of 2017 because she's got JJ ahead of her and what I don't want to see for her is a rush a rush all of a sudden That's she gets JJ too much more in the UFC. let her get experience she needs ring time JJ let him get experience yes. um but you know this is the weird part about it is I said the same thing about Cody Garbrandt agree that's a great point <laughs> i was like just give him some time to get fill point. out his skin give him a minute and then it's like whoa this new breed of fighter might be eating yeah grasso has been training to fight it jj Misha since Tate, she's got in in ronda rousey we're seeing all these older that that the, that 32 33 year old it's just not what it used to be when because these kids are growing up now watching next level so they're training for the next level. Yeah. All this stuff. And I, if I was a kid, I'd be doing all that stuff with my brothers for sure. I'd be practicing all those kicks, the showtime kick, all those fence kicks, all that. I'd be, and I did for a point in time. And it's fun. And you, you emulate what you watch. So every time you see something flashy, Ezekiel choke. Guess what? You're gonna see people trying Ezekiel chokes from now on. Like yeah. it all works. It all all works. And it, then the reminder, I think, it's a great thing, a testament, is you know. Uh, we watch Ronda, the champ forever. Every single woman in the division trains for the arm bar. Everyone's, that's the one thing they aren't worried about anymore is the arm bar. The one thing everyone trains for is that arm bar. So now we have a new champion. She comes in, she's standing and punching, she's murking everyone. So now everyone's trying to figure out how to deal with that. They forget now about the arm bar. They're so busy with this forward pressure, forward pressure fighter, forward pressure fighter. We forget about the original move that everyone was scared of. And these new kids are growing up watching all these moves and they're getting getting good at it. Yes. So I just think it's so, it's so great. Football, how much faster can a catch get to the end zone? How much higher can the scores get? How how many more records can be broken in all these other sports? Fighting is, and I was somebody who was anti-fighting. So now I just am like, whoa, it's, this it's, is the next level. This is, this, is, this is fighting, but it's also a competitive sport. And I think that there's honor in it. And some people really do take the art, the honor route of it. And I really love that. But I also do believe that there needs to be heels. I love some of those um, wrestling-based kind of promotions that some of these guys do with all the t- calling out and all that. Like... It's fun. It makes the fight more interesting. But don't go boxing. Don't do boxing where you start to get in a fight in every press conference. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't trash it up because it's a thin line we're walking with the public. Well, I just think it it has to be real or the public sees through it. I agree. The bullshit has to be real. But that's why we love Cormier Jones. 
Because it's yes, real. It's, real. it's so it. real. Or even Connor. He's real. He brings a real and yeah. he makes people get into Diaz. it. Diaz. It's why yeah. we love the Diaz brothers. They're real. It's They're why real. we are embarrassed and uncomfortable with wide men and with Cormier when they try to be a heel. Yeah. Because they're not supposed to be. Yeah, man. Like, well, how do you feel about Brothwell? Because he's trying the heel role by doing like the weird walk offs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't think he needs. I just think he. Yeah, it's. He's just goofy. He's just goofy. It's, yeah, it looks. Cor- it's corny. <laughs> yeah, it looks corny. I think Rhonda. It's hard for the women to be a heel. I think Rhonda was a natural heel for the women's division. If Holly came out and was a heel tomorrow, it wouldn't make any sense. But I think Amanda Noons got to see that twisted side of what happened because she's not a natural heel. Uh-huh. She is seems like a very nice person with a lot of class. And so when she tried to heal it up with the Rhonda thing at, yeah, after yeah, yeah. their fight was over, she, I think she lost fans from that. Mm, I think it has to be a genuine thing for... I think the best thing that happened for Cyborg in the last two weeks was the Tony Hinchcliffe little thing on Twitter because it made her seem like that the joke back and forth and her joking back with him about herself makes her human yeah and it makes it you have to be able to laugh at yourself if you want people people can laugh with you Charlie Sheen could get fans again people can laugh with you if you don't just avoid it if you don't avoid it look at Chael he's a perfect example yeah if you don't avoid it and just own up to whatever it is that the issue may be then you know great advice from Lesbo and the Bean that is, anyways. Moving on to, on the, to next. the main event. Main event. This is an FS1 card. I cannot remember? believe this is the main event. I was thinking, it's, gosh, how many more fights do we have to go through? This does not... This it, seems like a fight pass main event. It's a, it's a um, six-card main event. And it is not the best, best card. I think that we're going to see some highlights. We're going to see some people like Grasso... Angela Hill. All the people that were bitching about last week's card. Yeah. This, this makes the last week's card look like a pay-per-view. I would agree with that 100%. <laughs> this is a way tougher fight, but we're going to also see Dennis Bermudez, I feel like, shine in this. Against he needs to. I agree with The you. Korean Zombie at 145. Korean Zombie had to take a hiatus for two years off of his last loss, TKO, uh, against Jose Aldo for the championship. But if you remember correctly, he was TKO'd because his shoulder came out of the socket and then Jose Aldo kept kicking him in the shoulder until the ref saw it and called the fight. Yeah. That isn't something you get better from. Your shoulder dislocating out of its socket. And if That's we, shoulder issues. If the Chael fight is any indication. Key, any indication of how long you can spend out of the ring, ring rust is real. Once you get past two years, that your joints and muscles and shit like that, you, you, they might as well be rusted and shut. Well, we they don't know. Be, because that, he was picked unusable. up by his local government. He was picked up by his... He had to do his uh, national duty for South Korea. Yeah, and to the his military. Time, was he practicing MMA for two years? Or was he practicing military drills? Well, the other thing I have to say about this fight is... Um, I think there is a Korean zombie spirit that exists. I do think South Korea, there's this zombie spirit that exists with Korean fighters. And I think it has left Chang Sung Jung. And I think that spirit exists in one man now. And it's Choi. Choi. It's Doho. I would say there's a couple, but I'd say that the reason that the whole even South Korea scene came up was because... Of the Korean it's just zombie. Been too long. He was the first one. Bermuda's is he I, he's first been on a mad tear. He's looked good of. in his last fights. Yep. You I just don't think it's like you don't come out of this big of a gap in your career and go up against a guy like Dennis Bermudez. I think this isn't an easy this they're not doing the Korean zombie any favors any in this favors fight. At all, so at all, I just think all. Ring Rust is real. I think Bermudez is at the top of his game right now. So I just don't see this going well. And I know a lot of people love the Korean zombie. He hasn't been around since I've really been watching UFC. Yeah, he's been out for a long time. Um, he beat Dustin Poirier when he was a greenhorn. It was a, one of the upsets of the year. Um, prior to that, he lost to a TKO to George Roop. He had one of the fight of the years a few years ago against Leonard Garcia, who's now completely retired from the sport. And he had almost two fights of the year with him. But if you really look back at the caliber and style of fighter who's a Donald Cerrone disciple, Leonard Garcia, he really wasn't the best MMA fighter. It was just the lack of fighters at the time. The sports evolved past, I feel like, Jung Sung, even though he's um, only 29 years old. But Bermudez has looked really good. Honey Jason is no slouch. He just beat him in his decision. He beat Keijuari, who nobody's calling out that Japanese Keijuari fighter out. That dude is a bust. 
great ground game. Um, Bermudez, I think, kept it standing and just what picked them Bermudez's apart. What was Bermudez's last loss? Last loss was to Jeremy Stevens TKO. Respectable for anyone, and he got and don't pulled you into think a firefight. That was Jeremy Stevens. He looked Jeremy Stevens at his best during that fight. Jeremy he hasn't Stevens, looked like that since his last two fight. I mean, he's gone against monsters because of that fight. Yeah, Jeremy Stevens did, looked so good in that yeah. fucking fight. He yeah. Jeremy Stevens. What he did was he was able to coerce. Dennis if you don't Bermudez know who we're into, talking about, <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? Jeremy, Jeremy Stevens. Fucking Stevens. That's who. Um, Dennis Bermudez got trapped into a firefight and obliged. If Dennis Bermudez would have kept a technical takedown, um, technical boxing fight that we know that Dennis Bermudez can execute, he would have won a decision in that fight. But he chose to bite down on his mouthpiece. Jeremy Stevens does have the type of power to shut out your lights. Yeah. And they both hurt each other multiple fights I or multiple times. I feel like it was a candidate for fight of the year over two years ago now. He also lost prior to that to Ricardo Lamas, which I don't care who you are, not respectable. You're you you don't lose any respect for losing to either one of those fighters. He's come back and beat again. Kei no, Juari especially and Ricardo Honey Lamas Jason. over two years ago. And when he, well, Ricardo <laughs> yeah. Lamas was looking way yeah. better. Um, he's not doesn't look bad now, but yeah, I think pretty easy round one or two finish. I see for Dennis I agree Bermudez. with you. I just feel like. It's going to be a BJ Penn style of uh, main event where jo- uh, Korean Zombie's going to say, whoa, these guys have taken it leaps and bounds further than I ever did. But he could surprise me and been training MMA for two years in the military. There is a s- new set of Korean fighters that are coming out that are looking good. Um, he has the skills, but when your shoulder pops out, when you throw punches and kicks, you don't get better for that, especially when age, with age coming. You don't get any better with that. That's major shoulder surgery stuff. I've had friends that have that that can't play badminton because their shoulder will pop out of its socket, let alone throw a hard punch. This fight, I can't. It's Super Bowl weekend this weekend. This oh, what? I don't even. What are we bringing that up for? Who cares about well, Super Bowl? because this card. Is could, it going to take up potential media from it for Saturday? Well, I think this card could be on earlier and it would get more viewers. I agree because it's going to finish, what, around midnight now? Yeah, and, and if six. people want to, people are going to want to turn it up for Super Bowl Sunday. So if this, if the UFC is planning around it, I just think they could do something a little wiser than this card for, or this, maybe this would be your freak show card. This would be super fights only? Yeah, where you just uh-huh. put on the weird. Like an Anderson Silva Yeah, or, or the, someone, even the weird, uh, you have a, what's that wrestler, the CM Punk he comes on, yeah, but he can't main event it, right? Card. Or just put a CM Punk card. Who cares? Even yeah. if he's the second one on Co-main this card, event. it wouldn't Agreed. hurt. Yeah, I'd agree with it that. He hurt. would bring the eyes of... I just feel like people are sitting around almost like waiting for Christmas or Thanksgiving before Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. don't want to go out and turn it up Saturday night That's because you don't want to be twisted two days in a row or be hungover. It's like an American holiday. Yeah, yeah, put yeah. on a freak show fight. That'll make people... You already have it on FS1. CM Punk would make people turn over. Yeah, I make really, those wrestling fans. There's nothing going on in wrestling. I really don't like a Put untested. Brock and CM Punk on the same card. Brock wouldn't do an FS card, though. He'd do pay-per-view only only because of the money kickbacks. Unless they had cut do up a something. Do a Brock pay-per-view right card on... That might be tough, though, because I could see people spending their I money. I just don't on. care about Brock Lesnar at all. So I'm like, yeah, if you're I mean, just going to throw that shit all on a card at, at Super Bowl... So I'm just looking at this card. Uh-huh. And I don't know if the UFC is... Are they spinning their wheels because of the lack of Connors and Rouseys? Like, what is going on? I don't. I don't know if they're trying to pad some cards, but even that Holly Holmes GDR fight coming up is a weird main oh. event for a pay per view. I love that fight though. I honestly love that fight, but I think that the Iron Lady is so incredibly underrated. If you haven't heard the Howard Stern show Holy or the shit, After he Show. Does. Oh my goodness! No, it's the Howard Stern show, and there's a prank call that they do. Um, where they use clips from another part of the show and they call some podcast, but GDR's the... GDR, Jerain Derendami is on this podcast and they start asking questions that they would ask a juggalo. And <laughs> I, I don't want to taint our podcast with what they say, but you got to get to it. And it I would taint is, it. If I could pull it up right now, I'd pull it up and it, play it quote, quote for quote, right? Because it is, <laughs> it is gold. so funny. It's so funny. She Poor answers dude. the first couple of questions like they're real. Yeah. Like, and then they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have to pull it up. There's got to be a way to find it or listen to Howard Stern on Sirius. A little free plug, Sirius. And if you need a new MMA show, you can hit up Lesbo and the Bean. <laughs> right. You can also hit us up on Twitter 
And we also at, have... Follow us at Lesbo and the Bean on Twitter. We also have a Gmail if you have any questions for us. And we're kind of reintroducing ourselves to all the people that are going to find us for the first time on iTunes. We just kind of went right into the fights. I'm Lesbo. I am the Bean. And... I am a lesbian, if the name doesn't give it away already, and uh, the bean is for Mexican, so... Oh, I was going to say I was a legume. Legume. I was a legume. No, yes, I'm my heritage... Mexican-American, his heritage is Mexican. My heritage is Mexican, I am 100% American, but um, yeah, I can come in some insights, I've... He's been watching UFC forever. Watched it since I was a kid on VHS at the Blockbusters, getting those tapes and uh, practicing with my evil twin brother and other brothers we would practice mma i wrestled for a long time did the military even had uh mma fight an amateur fight back in portland oregon for chael sonin's fcff so been watching the sport love it love to break it down i would be talking we would be talking about these fights regardless of the podcast so we just kind of figured let's put some mics on and uh see what happens and we've had a pretty good response i think that we've put out really good free bets and we've had people cashing in for free and uh we just enjoy the ride come along with us yeah so um subscribe to us on itunes uh follow us on twitter at lesbo and the bean if you want to check out any of our old shows on bumpers fm you can feel free to do that um if you don't want to don't worry about it we're going to be putting out a bunch of new uh broadcasts on here i guess broadcast podcast that's the term yeah. of it let's go to the beat